The Pentagon is extending the stay of San Diego-based USS Abraham Lincoln in the Middle East. The aircraft carrier left San Diego in July to help defend Israel. Along with the carrier, San Diego-based destroyer, the USS Okay, nearly 6,500 personnel are stationed on board both ships. This all comes as Iran fires nearly 200 missiles at Israel. Joining us this morning, Cameron Kansarini is vice president of the National Union for Democracy in Iran. Nufti Cameron, good morning. Good to see you. Thank you for having me, Charlie. You know, Israel, we are hearing, we've been hearing since yesterday, vowing Iran will pay for this attack. Cameron, we've seen this back and forth and this tit-for-tat uh, attacks between these two countries with the intent for them to send messages. Iran last did this in April. What was different about this attack yesterday? Uh, well, what was different this time, Charlie, was that this was the largest ballistic missile attack in history. Hundreds of ballistic missiles were sent uh, towards Israel. Uh, the Iron Dome, uh, Israel's def defection system or protection system, unfortunately, was not as effective as last time. Uh, several of these missiles did uh, hit Israeli territory. One fell within 1,500 uh, meters uh, of Israelis Mossad headquarters of course their their head of their intelligence operations uh, one fell short of its target unfortunately in the Palestinian territories and killed a young Palestinian man um, so these were more effective than the last uh, round of attacks uh, and of course the reaction that we're seeing from inside Iran is the same uh, as last time um, but their effect in Israel was much greater uh, in this go about the Islamic Republic in Iran has been responsible for the death and murder of hundreds of thousands of people. Some would arguably say even more. Yesterday, uh, the vice president, Vice President Harris, called Iran a destabilizing force in the region. Many people saying, when is enough enough? Well, I think that the uh, Vice President Harris was, was close to the mark, but not quite on it. As you said, Charlie, the Islamic Republic is a destabilizing force and has been for 45 years. Iran, the people of Iran, are fighting against the Islamic Republic every single day. They make a point to say that this is the Islamic Republic in Iran, just as you did in your introduction, not the Islamic Republic of Iran. This regime has very little, if anything, to do with Iran. Iran, for thousands of years, has sought peaceful relations with its neighbors, be they Arab uh, or Jewish. Uh, and even within its own borders, Christians, Jews, and Muslims have lived peacefully side by side. What the Islamic Republic has done is taken a nation of now 85 million people and its immense wealth hostage to pursue a radical end of the world ideology, to wipe Israel off the map, to kill Jews, to kill Americans, and of course, to kill Iranians. Uh, so what I think many people are now hopeful after this reckless action, the latest reckless action by Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei, is that people in the Middle East, people in the world, the Israeli government will realize enough should be enough. Retaliatory strikes will not be sufficient. It is time to help the people of Iran to overthrow uh, this criminal regime that has held them hostage and has had, frankly, held the region and the world hostage for nearly half a century. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that response in just a moment of what could be uh, the response from Israel and how the U.S. will be involved. But I just want to spend one more moment talking about the people in Iran, because I know yesterday uh, we saw video coming out of the people, the Iranian people, chanting from their rooftops, saying death to the, the dictator. Uh, their message very loud and clear that they do not stand with what their uh, government is doing. That's exactly right. And, and it's unfortunate because this is another example, of course, never here on Fox 5 and never with Shali, but some journalists in, in the mainstream media uh, reported, for example, in the New York Times, that while these attacks were being carried out, there were chants of Aloha Akbar or God is great, that the regime supporters were rallying to the regime. Uh, this is merely another example of the Islamic Republic's influence uh, and penetration of, of so many key influence circles in the West. The reality on the ground in Iran was far from that. It was exactly what you said, that as these missiles were being fired, and indeed some Iranians were killed by the launch of these missiles because the regime is so inept and cares so little about the people of Iran, Iranians took to their rooftops, mainly in the capital of Tehran, but also other cities, to chant death to the dictator mm. and death to Khamenei. This is just the most recent example of the vast chasm, the difference we've seen between the people of Iran and the regime occupying the country and holding the people hostage. We've also seen many more examples. Uh, the, the, the hashtag Iranians mm. stand with 
Israel is trending on social media. Iranians recognizing that this 2,500-year-old biblical connection between Iranians and Jews, uh, Persians and Israelis uh, should continue going forward, should be the basis of peaceful coexistence. And that's the exact opposite of what the Islamic Republic yeah. stands for. So in their street protests on social media, Iranians are showing that they are not this regime and they will not be defined by it. Cameron, the world is watching to see how Israel is going to respond. And there's a lot of uh, talk about whether Iran's nuclear sites will be targeted and how y the U.S. is going to be play a part in this response. What do you see happening in the coming days? I think that the attack was so significant by the Islamic Republic, it's impossible to imagine the Israelis uh, not delivering an equally significant response. Of course, uh, I'm like some anyone of Iranian heritage, it, it's painful to see uh, your homeland and, and your people uh, potentially on the receiving end of retaliatory military strikes. But this is what so many people have been warning for for four decades, that the Islamic Republic's warmongering will get us to this point. It's going to unfortunately cost uh, if something like this were to happen, potentially innocent Iranian lives. And that's because Ali Khamenei and his dictatorship don't care about the people of Iran. So I think that it's possible that nuclear sites, oil refineries, parts of the country's national infrastructure could be targeted. But what I hope for, and what I think millions of Iranian hope, Iranians hope for, is that beyond mere retaliatory strikes, mm -hmm that Israel realizes once and for all that it cannot control the Islamic Republic with retaliatory strikes. It cannot put the Islamic Republic in a box. As long as the Islamic Republic exists, it is going to try to destroy Israel. And their true response would be helping the people of Iran, who are the true troops on the ground fighting every single day to overthrow this regime and finally sure. bring peace to the Middle East once again. And we'll continue to uh, watch this developing story over the coming days. Cameron Cancerinia, thank you for your time. Thank you.